Every morning I come into my workshop, take off my gloves, helmet, backpack and jacket and my workbench is instantly covered in bike gear. And as much as I love motorcycle gear, it is rather cumbersome to store neatly. So I decided to make a wall organizer out of wood and utilize some bike parts I had lying around too. If you've been here a while, you might remember that I built a similar helmet wall stand a few years ago. It was the best thing I'd ever made, but unfortunately it got lost during my country hopping. So I figured it was time to make another one, but this time with a few changes and more additions. As always, I started with a plank of wood and some measurements. First, I needed to cut out a 75 by 35 centimeter backboard for everything to mount to. However, this time it was faster than usual since I finally invested in a circular saw. Well, that was easy. Straight, fast, smooth. I like it. That cuts beautifully and way straighter than I ever get it with a handsaw. But wow, it makes a hell of a mess. It's literally all the way over here even. It throws it absolutely everywhere. Then I needed to decide what angle I wanted the helmet shelf to be at. And that required some high tech calculations. Thank God for smartphones. And this is why I bought a circular saw. So I could just set my blade to the 20 degrees that I wanted the cut to be at. And finally, I needed a brace to support the shelf, which actually required some high school maths. Because if the interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees, and the shelf's interior angle is 70 degrees, then the cuts on the brace each needed to be 55 degrees, or just 35 degrees and cut the other way around, since a saw only goes up to 45 degrees anyway. That was the first time I've ever used high school maths outside of high school and the first time that I got my angles correct on my first try. A lot of firsts for me today. A few moments later. So although the angles were correct on this one, I didn't like how long it was because it makes this space where I plan to put my gloves a bit too big. So I quickly made another one that should be a better size. That'll be much cozier for my gloves to live in. The three pieces were then assembled with some screws and wood glue and I could then see where I needed to put a wooden block to stop the helmet from sliding off the angled shelf. I ended up using the first brace that was too big since it already had an angle on one end and just needed to be cut smaller. I should have done this before I assembled the shelf but since I didn't plan ahead I then couldn't get a screwdriver in there and just ended up using wood glue not that there will be much force on it anyway. On my original helmet stand, I made a hook for my backpack out of a piston that was from my dad's 50cc or something really old like that. But this time, I have my own piston to use out of my Yamaha YZ250. It's a lot bigger and cooler. Since it was the first time I'd ever opened an engine or done a top end rebuild, so I'm really excited to have it on display. And then I have this front sprocket that should have enough teeth to hang up my jacket. This was also from my YZ250, however I absolutely hate it. It literally took me days to get the stubborn stuck sprocket off and eventually resulted in me buying an impact wrench just to get the stupid thing off. So now it can be on display and remind me that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Or more realistically, if you have the correct power tools. I then mocked up where I wanted these two to go and drilled the holes they would later need. With the sharp edges cleaned up, it was ready to be stained. And this is your reminder to check for holes in your container before you decant your wood stain. 
because, as it says on the tin, it left a stain on my bench. But when I did finally get it on the correct piece of wood, it was rather satisfying as it started to look better. While that dried, I got rid of the surface rust on the sprocket with some degreaser and a Scotch-Brite pad to make it look less like a worn-out sprocket that I hate. I also had to drill a hole in my piston to mount it, which just felt wrong, even though I'm never going to use it again anyway. I sandwiched the sprocket between two washers so that it would look similar to how it would be on a bike and used a nut to space it away from the backboard so a jacket can hang on it. The piston was straightforward with a bolt through the hole I drilled earlier and a nut on the back. But with the bolts sticking miles out of the backboard, they had to be cut down to length and the mounting process repeated. And the last piece of the puzzle is this master link for my bike key to hang on. I ditched the o-rings, grease and outer plate, mixed up some glue and stuck the link with the pins next to the sprocket to add to my bike parts jewelry. And that's that, a neat and awesome looking way to keep all my gear in one place while I'm at the workshop so that it doesn't take up my workbench anymore. I always enjoy making something out of wood and I love that I have the piston from my dirt bike on display and I get to see the sprocket that I resent every day to remind me of some philosophical bullshit. My backpack is accessible, my gloves have their own area to dry off out of the helmet and everything gets to be an art piece while it's hanging up. But anyway, let me know what you think it's missing. LEDs? More bike parts? You tell me. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see future bike-related DIY projects, and I'll see you on the next ride.